Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct, interpret, and plot a two-way interaction between a continuous and a dummy-coded variable using linear regression. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial below. In previous videos on regression, I would showed you how to compute a categorical by continuous interaction with a dummy variable that only has a single level. But sometimes you have a categorical variable with multiple levels and you still want to interact that with your continuous variable and see what the relationship is as it influences some outcome variable. And that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video here. And specifically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this variable political identification, which is what political party someone identifies with. I'm going to see how that predicts how important people believe the video content is, the topic of the video when watching a video. But I'm going to see if that depends on the number of minutes that individuals watch a video. That's my continuous variable. Now, I can't just throw that into regression because political identification is a categorical variable. I have to include that in some other way. And so what I need to do is create a series of dummy variables and also a series of interaction variables for each of those dummy variables. Now, in another video, I talked about how to make these dummy variables for the individual levels of political identification. And here I'm going to show you how to do that automatically also for the interaction terms. And we need to do that before we can actually run our regression. But before I do that, there's one really important thing I have to make sure. Under political ID, if I scroll over to the right, I need to make sure that this is selected as a measure that is nominal and not a scale, even though previously that's exactly what I had in my data set. And the reason is when I create these dummy variables, it will differentiate between a nominal variable, which is this, and a scale variable, which is continuous, that's my minutes watched. If I do that, then I can go ahead and create those dummy variables. So let's do that. Transform, create dummy variables. And what I'm gonna do is include two dummy variables, political ID, and minutes watched. Now it's not actually gonna create dummy variables for the minute watched variable because that is continuous, but I'm gonna need that when I create the interaction term. So the first thing I do is create the root names for each of my variables, and I need to do this for as many variables as I have up here. So the first thing I'll put in is poll ID, is what I like as my root name for the variables, and that'll create these poll ID one, two, three, four, fives that we see on the side. It'll actually just overwrite them. I then also need something else. I'm gonna include minute watch, and it will actually create a new variable, but it won't create dummy variables out of it. It'll simply just recreate the variable. But then what I need to do is select this two-way interaction box right here. And here I can name my interaction term. And I like to have descriptive names, so I'm actually just going to call it poll ID underscore minute watch. And I'm going to know that when it creates those dummy variables that it's interaction between those two. That's all I actually need to do. So I can click OK. And if I go back to my data set, I see right here I've got all my variables. It overwrote these. I already had them before. It then created the interaction terms between political ID and minute watched, such that this one is the interaction between whether someone's a Republican coded one or zero and minute watched, Democrat coded one and zero minute watched, and so on. And it actually recreated this variable here. This is going to be identical to the other minute watched variable that we have. We now have everything that we need to run this regression. So I can go up to analyze, regression linear. And again, I'm going to be predicting the importance of what this video is about in determining whether someone watches the video. And I'm actually gonna include almost everything from this set here. Now, minute watched is our variable that we had before, which is just how many minutes somebody watched it. And we have all of our interaction terms. But one thing you have to remember about dummy variables is that the output is gonna be comparing to some reference, some baseline. And we have to determine what that baseline is. Now, it doesn't actually matter what you choose. It's really about what's important for you to compare. So I will actually choose Republicans as my baseline. And so everything in my regression will be saying relative to Republicans, what is the influence? And we'll see that in more detail in a moment. So to do that, I actually unselect Republicans as the basic dummy variable, as well as its interaction with minute watched. And then I can move everything over my to my independence column and I'll be able to run that regression. One thing I'm also gonna do is under save, I'm going to save the unstandardized predicted values and that'll be really useful for us when we plot these results. I click continue and then I click OK. And we see quite a bit, but if we scroll down, the most interesting piece right here are the coefficients. So how do we interpret these? So the first thing to point out is up here, we've got all of our dummy variables. Now these are comparing to the referent of Republican. So it's saying Democrats are less likely to find this variable important than Republicans. 
Independents are less likely than Republicans, Libertarians less likely, and others are less likely as well, though to be fair, none of those are statistically significant differences. At the very bottom, I have my minute watch variable, which is the continuous variable, and this one says, for every unit increase in minute watch, to what extent do people also increase the tendency to value what the video is about and choosing whether to watch it? And there's a negative coefficient suggesting there's a negative relationship, but again, that is not a significant predictor either. Our four interaction terms, though, are right here. And what they're saying is this. For Democrats relative to Republicans, what's the differential influence of minutes watched on this importance question? In other words, if we plot these and plot minute watched on the x-axis and importance on the y-axis, the slopes, the relationships between those two variables will be different between Democrats and Republicans. And I know that they're actually significantly different because my significance level right here is below 0.05. That's also true for independents versus Republicans at 0.024. Not true for libertarians versus Republicans, and not true for others versus Republicans. What's really important is what this regression doesn't tell us is the comparison, the interaction between any other combination of variables. I don't know about Democrats versus independents and if they're different in terms of their relationship between minute watched and importance. I don't know if independents versus libertarians are different in terms of that relationship. I can't determine that from this regression. If I wanted to know whether independents were different from Democrats, I would have to set one of those as my referent. So I'd put back the Republicans, and I'd take out the Democrats, for example, if I were trying to compare Democrats to these other categories. So just to mechanically see what that would look like, let's go ahead and through that exercise. If I go back up to Analyze Regression Linear, I'm going to take out the Democrats this time, both in terms of their base dummy variable and the interaction term. I'm going to put back the Republicans both in terms of their base dummy variable and its interaction. And then I'll run that. Now everything is comparing relative to Democrats. So if I wanted to know if independents versus Democrats are different in terms of their relationship between importance and minutes watched, I would look at this variable now, and they're not different. The only thing really worth pointing out here is that down here we've got Republicans versus Democrats. Remember before we had Democrats versus Republicans, which is the same thing, just a flip. And we have the exact same significance level, and we actually have the exact same coefficient, except now it's got a negative term to it because we're comparing it in the other direction. So this is the same analysis, Republicans versus Democrats. And that's how you would actually look at this in terms of an interaction between a multi-level categorical variable as well as a single continuous variable. What's critical is that you include the dummy coded values for each of those levels except for whatever your referent is, as well as all the relevant interaction terms between those dummy variables and the continuous variable. But now you might say, well, I want to visualize this. What does this actually look like? And we can do that. And we can do that by using the graphing tool, and I'll walk you through that step by step right now. If we go up to Graph, Chart Builder, we need to define what type of graph we're going to build, and we're going to build a line graph in this case. It's going to be a line graph with multiple levels, so more than one line on it, and we'll drag that up to the top. On the x-axis, it's just going to be our variable that's included in the regression. So in this case, it's going to be minutes watched. That's our x-axis variable. The y-axis is going to be our predicted outputs. Now remember, we saved those, and they're right here. This is just going to be repeated because we ran two different regressions, but they should be the same. So I'll just pick the first one. So we take that and put it over here. And the thing that we're missing is we have to set the color. We have to define how these lines differ. And they differ on political identification. But rather than using my dummy variables here, I actually can go right back up to my political identification variable right here, and I can use that to set the color. And what this will do is create separate lines for each of those political affiliations, Republican, Democrat, Independent, and so on. And if I click OK, I get this graph. This graph shows me the relationship between minutes watched, my outcome, my predicted outcome, which in this case is the importance that people place on what the video is about and determining whether to watch it, at each level of political orientation. So here's the line for Republicans. There's a negative relationship for them. Here's the line for Democrats, the green line. It's a positive relationship here. And we know that in fact those slopes, that negative slope and that positive slope are significantly different from one another because we saw that analysis above. And so this is the quick way to visualize what your model is actually predicting for each level of political identification. And that's it for a regression where we interact a multi-level categorical variable, right here, political identification, with a continuous variable, in this case, the number of minutes somebody watches, and try to predict some continuous outcome variable. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. 
If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.